David here with Fig Boot on Pens. Uh, today I have a pen from Conklin, which has a very long name. And that long name is the Conklin Heritage Conklinetta Senior in Mocha Swirl. Uh, this pen was loaned to me by a viewer by the name of Igor. Uh, he had just received this pen. Uh, I don't believe he had even inked it up before he sent it over to me to check it out. So I appreciate his patience in letting me borrow his new toy. Uh, I also appreciate it because this is a pen that doesn't necessarily match up with my personal tastes. Uh, it's something that I might have never purchased for myself. Uh, it can be interesting taking a critical look at something that I wasn't necessarily attracted to right out of the box. Uh, it forces me to kind of rethink my feelings about a certain aspects of the pen. Uh, first, just a little history about Conklin Pens. Uh, the company was founded by a gentleman by the name of Roy Conklin out of Toledo, Ohio back in 1891. Uh, at that time, he was granted his first fountain pen patent, and seven years later, in 1898, he launched his first pen. And a couple of years later, they launched what would prove to be their most successful model, the Crescent Filler. Uh, in 1903, they expanded their marketing, uh, which included an endorsement by the writer Mark Twain. By 1921, the Conklin Crescent Filler was the top-selling pen on the market. Uh, they continued to produce pens and come out with new models until 1955, when they ceased operations. Uh, the Conklin band brand was revived uh, in the early 2000s, and in 2009, it was acquired by Yaffa. Uh, I believe that since the revival, the pens are no longer manufactured in the United States. Okay, the pen I have for you today uh, isn't one of the Crescent fillers, but a variant on the same filling process. Uh, here is the Conklin Heritage Conklinetta Senior in Mocha Swirl. Uh, it's made of a glossy resin, uh, and it has some nice pearlescence to it when you uh, twist it around. Uh, we'll start by taking a look at the end of the cap. Uh, the end of the cap is rounded, uh, and then the cap is straight, uh, and then we have the clip. And, I, you know, I hate to say, but this style of Conklin clip is possibly my least favorite clip in my collection. Uh, I own another Conklin with this very same clip, and... I, I just feel it's a little uninspired. Um, it's a bit thick, which is fine, and it does function well. There's no issues with that. Um, the shape is basically straight, and then it tapers down, uh, and then it's straight again. And then stamped rather large on the, on the larger portion is the cursive Conklin logo. Uh, like I said, it's functional. I just personally don't care for the looks of the clip that much. Now, they don't have this clip on all their pens. Uh, I reviewed the Conklin Duragraph, and it doesn't have that clip. Oh, well, here's what that one looks like. You can see that it has a different style of clip, which I personally care for a little bit more. Uh, at the end of the cap, there isn't a traditional cap band, but there's kind of a narrow groove, which is an interesting visual element. Uh, the cap tapers down just a fraction, about half a millimeter here at the end. Then we have a small step down to the barrel, uh, which is straight as well, until about this point here near the end of the barrel where it again tapers down a little over a millimeter from about here to here. Uh, and at the, and the end of the barrel is slightly rounded as well. Uh, on the barrel, it's actually engraved with Conklinella Senior and then made in Italy, which is where I believe the resin is manufactured. Um, this model is called the Mocha Swirl. Uh, the pen is a, a dark brown, and when the light catches it just right, uh, like I said, the, uh, the, the barrel has a nice uh, amount of lighter brown pearlescence to it. Now, the distinguishing feature of this pen is the filling mechanism, which is controlled by this push button right here. Um, what happens is this metal band rotates uh, and serves as a locking mechanism. Uh, and that I do like that this piece is actually metal. There are some other pens on the market with somewhat fill similar filling systems where this piece uh, right here is clear plastic. Uh, and I've always felt that that kind of cheapened the look of those pens a bit. So uh, I like the fact that this is metal. It fills via this push button mechanism. Uh, what happens is you slide the lock ring and then you, the push button can be activated. Um, when you push the button, it compresses a rubber sack inside the barrel and expels air and creates a small vacuum. And then when you release it, the ink will be sucked up into the sack. 
Um, I have found that when uh, you're you're inking this pen, you need to keep the nibs submerged longer than you think you might need to after pressing the button. Uh, the button might pop out to its original state, but the sack inside the barrel still might be filling up. Um, there were a couple of times when inking this pen that I had pulled it out too fast, and you could instantly hear that telltale sucking sound of the sack bringing in air, meaning I didn't leave it in the ink long enough in order to fill it up completely with ink. The cap twists off uh, to reveal this nice looking two-toned steel nib. I believe this is like a number six size. On it is stamped Conklin and Toledo USA, calling back to the origins of the company. Uh, and then on the, the side of the nib is actually stamped with M for medium. Now, a couple of things about this nib I found interesting. Uh, the one is that the crescent-shaped uh, breather hole uh, is, is kind of cool. Uh, I like that the hole is wider than the feed, so you actually see all the way through the nib. Uh, and that I'm not sure if I've really ever seen that before. Uh, also, you can see in here that the feed has uh, dual channels, two channels to help with the ink flow, which is kind of cool as well. And then here's a look at the underside of the plastic feed. The section has a raised and rounded ring on the end, uh, and then has a slight angle up until it meets up with the threads, which aren't sharp at all. Uh, and then a rather smooth transition to the barrel. Uh, the pen is a bit on the light side, but it is comfortable in the hand, and having this metal back here doesn't off-weight it or anything along those lines. Um, that I did have an initial concern that the button would impede my grip, uh, but that really wasn't the case. When holding the pen, it's not facing straight up, but it's, it's facing a little bit off to the side, which works fa fine for a standard nib. But if you, by chance, put something like a right-footed oblique grind on this nib, uh, when writing, you would need to rotate the nib clockwise, and at that point, uh, the button would indeed rub up against your hand. So I wouldn't recommend that specific grind with this pen. Uh, the pen is plenty long enough for me to use unposted. Uh, the cap does post, and it does post securely. Uh, and the cap is actually light enough that I, I don't feel it backweights the pen at all when it's affixed. I, I will give Conklin credit for something here. Um, when a, peach, a, a pen has a feature like this button sticking out of it, um, you know, I personally uh, like it more that uh, like it so that when uh, it is capped, that it would align with the clip. Um, this cap has four different orientations, so the button can end up in a variety of different states when capped. Typically, that means you have to remember the orientation of the nib when you cap the pen in order to have the button facing up. You know, it might be, oh, I have it at a 90 degree angle or 45 degree angle or just at a specific angle that you have to kind of remember. Um, but for this particular pen, that orientation is easy to remember because it's just with the nib facing directly up. So when it's facing directly up and you cap it, then it uh, is facing straight up. Uh, I'm not sure if, if this was by chance or by design, but I'm giving them credit for that. Um, the price for the Conklin Heritage Conklin Etta Senior can vary. Um, I've seen it at some retailers for close to $200, and I've seen reputable eBay sellers selling them new in the box for around $100. So if you're interested in this pen, you might want to shop around a bit. So. Thanks go out again to Igor for the loan of this new pen. Uh, I appreciate the chance to take a look at it. Uh, Igor, it'll be on its way back to you shortly. So now it's time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Conklin Heritage Conklinetta Senior Mocha Swirl. Uh, that uh, here it is in regard to the uh, the Conklin Durograph. Uh, then here it is with a Pilot Prera. Uh, and then here it is with a Twisby Vac 700. In regard to some other pens, uh, here it is with a Delta Dolce Vita Oversize. Uh, then here it is with a Lamy 2000. And then here it is with a Pelican M600. Okay, so here we have the Conklin. We'll just call it the Conklinetta. The 
This is a, uh, a medium steel nib, uh, and the ink that I'm using today, since this is kind of an old school pen, I decided to go with an old school ink, which is the very first bottle of ink that I ever owned, which is Parker Quink. I guess Quink Black. Uh, this is what the color looks like. You know, when I I picked this up, or, I, or it was given to me in a, in a, a set, an urban gift set, and, and I used this ink for probably the first couple of years uh, before I purchased a, a, a different bottle of ink. But uh, that's what it looks like. Uh, then I, I actually graduated to Conway Stewart Bodeman, and for a long time I used that black ink before I really ventured out to other colors. Uh, right now I think my favorite... Uh, uh, black ink is the Sailor uh, Kiwaguru. Uh, that's just a nice solid black ink that's a little bit more um, saturated than some of these other ones. Uh, this is the bottle that the Quink comes in. Nice solid bottle, real deep, big fat top, so you have no problem in getting any pen that you want to in here. Okay, so let's go ahead with the rest of the writing sample. Tiny bit of railroading there at the end, but um, I will say that this is a, a decent nib in far getting some line variation. Like I said, there's a little bit of railroading in there, but starting off light and then putting a little more pressure uh, that you can get some line variation out of there. Um, in regard to wetness, this isn't the wettest ink but uh, it's a decent amount of wetness coming out of this nib. Uh, it flows really well. Uh, and then in regard to reverse writing, it actually puts down a, a very nice extra, extra fine line. And then in regard to some fast writing, It works just fine. While I had a little bit of uh, railroading here when I was trying to push the nib, that the ink flow was fine here and it didn't have any issues whatsoever. So thanks again. Go out to Igor for the loan of his brand new pen. Uh, this will be on the way back out to you. So uh, I appreciate you guys watching and I'll talk to you later.